Hey guys, welcome to my channel. You know it's Joe Jaguar, and I'm talking obviously about uh, telescopes. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys uh, what did I do. Um, you guys know I live in a white uh, light zone, which is the worst, uh, which is a huge city of uh, 4 million people. So it's a white zone, it's the worst. Because I was so frustrated by the light pollution in a big white zone and what I could see, and I couldn't see properly with galaxies, almost nothing at all. Even with the big telescopes, like 10 inch telescopes in the city, uh, galaxies are almost impossible. Or you're just gonna see this very central cores of uh, just a handful. Nebulas are a little better, but I just couldn't see what they call those deep sky objects well, or good enough, or most of them. Um, if you guys are in the city, and you wanna see some of that deep sky stuff, you probably need to go, I probably would recommend between eight and 12 inch. Um, Cause you just, the bigger it is, the more light it's gonna collect. However, there is a limit as well. Um, I used to have a 16 inch Dobsonian. Maybe I'll put a picture on right here. And just to give you guys an idea, 16 inch, downtown Toronto um, with that size and I, compare it to let's say a three inch refractor 80 millimeter f5 refractor I was at I think a green zone about an hour and a half out of the city and that little three inch did a thousand times better what I could see than a 16 inch in the city three inch in a green zone killed a 16 inch in a white zone so getting to darker skies are always the number one thing. Um, however, can you get to the dark skies? That's a whole different ballpark. So this video, I'm just getting into what did I do to get to dark skies and maybe what will you guys do or what are you willing to do uh, to get to dark skies? Now, so this is probably, I would say 97, 98. Um, I did not drive at that time. I did not have any friends that uh, I, I knew liked to go camping, cottaging, trailers up north. I didn't know anybody like that. So, and usually in my mind, if I have a problem, an issue, I find a way to deal with it. I don't dwell and say, oh my God, I, I'm so depressed. I can't, you know, I, I love this hobby, but I can't do it because it's, I can't get away from dark skies or, or two dark skies from the city. Um, I figured out how to do it. So again, I did not drive. So what I did is, and this, I had something similar as my first real telescope, as I explained to you guys in the past. It's a six inch F5 reflector. I got this package here and I decided I'm gonna go camping by myself alone for the whole weekend starting Friday, what I decided is one weekend a month. Now mind you, in this hobby, you can book it a month ahead. Sometimes you have to book it even two months ahead or the campsites are gonna be all taken up, especially in the summer, the good summer. Uh, where I am in Ontario, Canada, the provincial parks type of thing for camping only starts in like May 15, weekend, right. October 15, and then that's it. So you get basically six months so basically what I did is one weekend a month. Now, I was carrying this guy. Now remember, I don't drive. So what I did with this guy is I put that in a duffel bag, wrapped it up, then the tripod mount in another duffel bag and I had one in each hand. Now, in my back, you ha I had like the largest kind of backpacks that you can get. And I just wrote a list because I'm sure I don't even have everything on here. Just to give you an idea, okay? I would have my, of course, the bag, the sleeping bag, a two inch foam uh, kind of mattress type of thing, all my clothes. So a few changes of clothes, underwear, socks, uh, a couple jackets, shoes, uh, maybe two pairs, um, flashlights, small radio, just listen to the radio because the batteries don't um, uh, kill it that quick. So at least I have something keeping me company. Cause remember I'm alone in the woods. So at least I have some music to occupy me type of thing. Uh, batteries, uh, can opener, portable burner, 
uh, so I can make some coffee, uh, maybe heat up some cans. Usually I did like cans of food and corn or uh, I don't know, beef stew, maybe a pot, one pot. So everything that you would need to go camping. Uh, and it came with those small gas cartridges, maybe two or three, that way I have a spare. All my books, maps, charts that I need for this thing, eyepieces. Um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting everything else that you need to go camping for a full Friday, Saturday, and Sunday uh, type of thing. So I'm probably forgetting, but that just gives you guys an idea roughly what I had to carry. So one bag, the OTA or the telescope, the other bag, the tripod, the weight and all that, and then everything else that I, a normal person would have for camping is on my backpack. So it was very heavy and I probably could only walk about um, maybe 200 meters before I would have to take a little break. After that, it would just be a little bit too much. Anyway, but what I had to do, again, I don't drive, so I would take the transit to or, like the GO station. Then the GO station, I had to take a GO bus um, to uh, probably about an hour away to a transport point because it didn't go all the way to that park, of course. Then from that trans, uh, transit station, hour, hour and 10 minutes, whatever it was, another go bus to the closest, it was a small town. I don't remember exactly, probably uh, two, 3,000 people town. Uh, and then from that town, I had to take a taxi to the campsite. And then once I registered type of thing like that, then I probably have to walk about a kilometer, maybe sometimes uh, two kilometers to inside the park to my specific campsite. So that's what I had to do. And Mind you, I had to pay for the, uh, again, the uh, two ways, the, the go buses, trains, and all that. Uh, I had to pay for the camping site. And usually when you go with friends, you split all those costs. Of course, I'm doing that uh, all by myself. Um, and then all the food you need. Um, and really, you know, it's also a little bit boring when you're alone, especially in the daytime, because I wasn't going there to camp. I was, doing, I was going there so I could get away from the city skies and see a little bit more of my hobby. Um, so even though I do like cottaging and camping and going up north, it was mainly because of this hobby. Mind you guys, if you guys are in the city and you basically just look at the sun, moon, and planets uh, and a few double stars and clusters, you do not need to go out of the city. The planets look 99% exactly the same in the city in the dark skies, in the country skies, no matter where you go, they're so bright that 99% of the time is virtually identical. You do not need to go out for that. It's what the deep sky stuff you do need. Um, see more of the clusters, uh, the open clusters, globular clusters, uh, the nebulas and the galaxies. Those are the deep sky stuff that are extremely far away. Uh, they actually, you calculate it in light years now, not even in kilometers. You can't even do kilometers anyway. So just to give you an idea, the Andromeda galaxy is, well, there's different stats for it, but the, the least one is 2.5 million light years away to 3 million light, light years away, depending what source you, you have. Now, mind you too, so it wasn't so cheap. Uh, and also remember, when you book this, you don't know how the sky conditions are gonna be. They can be cloudy all weekend. Maybe you, you get, if you're lucky, you get that two clear nights because you only got the Friday night, the Saturday night, Sunday uh, time to go home type of thing. So you only get two clear nights, but three days. Um, so you don't know what the weather's gonna be. Is it raining the whole weekend? Is it cloudy the whole weekend? Do you get two clear skies? Do you even get one? I figured as long as I get one out of the two, it's better than nothing. Once you buy your equipment, once you buy all your camping gear, and then stuff like that, by the time, uh, it's probably at least 200 bucks for a weekend. At least, with, you know, without including any of your gear that, that you need. Um, so it's not so cheap, but it's not so expensive. So it's doable. That's what I did to get away from the country or the city skies to country skies. But when I say country, just letting you guys know, um, and if, if you guys don't know, it goes like when you talk about the light pollution scale, it goes white is the worst, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then gray, then black. So I'm in a white zone. Where I went camping was only like an orange zone. So really, when I say 
deep country skies, it's not even that great. It took me three hours by the transit, the two go buses, then the taxi, then the final one to two kilometer walk, three hours, one way. Uh, and then of course, three hours back to the next way. So with all that gear and stuff, wasn't uh, very easy, but I did what I wanted to do, you know, to see things properly. But, you know, again, I'm only talking about going to light pollution skies better. It's not a huge difference. I normally tell people going from one zone to the net is 50%, if that's easier. Going from the white zone to the red zone is 50% better than 50% better than 50. So I only went two zones and that's in our province. It's very heavy light, light polluted and that's how long it takes. I mean, if I were to drive to get there, it would probably take about an hour and 15 minutes by all the transit, then of course the waiting times and they go slower and there's stops. Uh, it took three hours. So, but let's, let's say driving wise. Driving wise, hour and 15 minutes, you're only going about two zones better. You really gotta go uh, probably, you know, almost up to like an hour, 45 minutes to two hours before you get to a green zone. A green zone is where I consider where the dark skies the objects, that's where I kind of uh, consider it to be good, green and better. So it uh, goes white, red, orange, then yellow. So those are the first four worst, and then the next four is then green, blue, gray, black. So the green is where I consider it becomes amazing at that zone and better. And even if you go from then the green to the blue, it's even better, blue to the gray, even better, gray to the black, that should be like amazing. I have never been to a black zone, have been to every zone um, but the black. Um, the best zone I've like in now or was before was the gray zone. So anyway, uh, that's how it goes. That's what I had to do. Um, and mind you, then those six months that the campsites are not open, that's nothing to do. Anyway, guys, so I will, that's what I had to do. That's what I used. Now, if I had to change anything, I probably would use a six inch SCT. Now, as you saw in one of my other videos, if you haven't, go back and see it. It's called a six inch SCT versus a six inch refractor versus a six inch reflector, this guy. So you will see when I put a six inch SCT to this guy, it's only about that big. Have to wait half the size um, and because of that I probably don't need an EQ3 I could probably put it in an EQ2 now remember I'm just talking about visual uh, if you're doing astrophotography you need a much much bigger mount and you probably couldn't take transit or what I did because your mount would be so big it, you couldn't you wouldn't need a, a vehicle but anyway if I was to do that now I would do a 6 inch SCT on an EQ2 it would be half the size of that it would still be heavy, but not this heavy, what I did. So if I had to change it and go back in time, I would have done that. It would have been half the weight or even two thirds the weight less. And it's the six inch reflector and SCT basically are gonna collect the same light. They're both the same size. Now this one is a much wider field of view at F5 versus an SCT F10. So Sometimes in the, in the country skies, you want a wide angle because there's a lot of big stuff out there that you will not see in the city. So you might as well take advantage of a wide angle scope if you can. You can push the power on it more. So that's always the good, um, a, a good idea if you have a, you know, a, a wide field telescope. You can push the power when you need to, but at its base start, it's already wide. Um, where the other way, if it's already, uh, NF10 is considered medium. So if you have a medium, there's only so low down you can go. Anyway guys, uh, I think that's long enough on this video. And that's what I had to go through. What would you guys have to go through to get into the hobby? Joe Jaguar, cheers, comment, subscribe, and share my link. And I'll see you guys on the next video.